Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Friday evening, September 22nd. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone. And in making decisions, consult the information from the National Hurricane Center, your local weather office, and your government officials. We continue to track Hurricane Maria, now located north of the Turks and Caicos, which thankfully have avoided a direct hit from the core of Maria as the hurricane has turned north in time and is now moving north-northwestward, if not northward in the last few hours, and uh, thus these islands will not be getting hurricane conditions. However, high surf, some surge, and tropical storm force winds are impacting some of these areas, and tropical storm warnings are up for these islands for the next several hours, but the hurricane is now moving away, and the core will avoid these areas that were hit by Irma a couple weeks ago. So that's good news. As far as the intensity of the storm goes today, it remains kind of disheveled. Uh, you can see in the core, we have sort of this spiraling band that at the end of the loop you'll see here wrapping into the eye. It's not a closed donut ring like we had back when the system was a Cat 5 and very strong. And this indicates a lack of health, along with the fact that the eye is not clear and it has clouds making it sort of murky in appearance. This indicates a couple of things. One is that it never really recovered its eye wall after leaving Puerto Rico, and one reason it may have not done that is because there's some shear impinging upon the storm. This is the water vapor imagery showing a mid to upper level flow. You'll see this general large trough over the Gulf of Mexico and all this southwesterly flow coming across Cuba and the Bahamas in the mid-levels toward the hurricane, and this pushes on the thunderstorms and forces them more off onto the northeastern side a bit. You can see there's not a lot of banding on this side, but there is more here. You can also see this on the microwave image, which, which shows banding focused on the north side of the eye and then the north side of the system with the outer banding as well. Not so much down here on the southwest side because the shear is out of this direction. In addition, shear often forces dry air into the circulation of these storms. And uh, there may be some around here. If you look at where I'm circling on this loop, you'll see a thunderstorm that dissipated north of the Cuban coast this afternoon. The reason it dissipated is because there's a lot of dry air just south of the Bahamas here, and this dry air may be getting wrapped into the circulation some as the hurricane has been moving past the area today. And you can sort of envision that this uh, dry air is helping to fuel the disruptions in the inner core, and then you have entanglement of moist and dry air flows kind of spiraling together here in the middle of the storm. This indicates that dry air is likely getting entrained somewhere, and whenever dry air is getting entrained at all, it really disrupts these things and kind of prevents strengthening if this is already a strong hurricane. Conditions have to be nearly perfect for these things to be Category 4s and Category 5s, so it's not at all surprising that any disruption from this shear and dry air that we mentioned will keep this down right now at Category 3 strength, which is what, it, is what it's at, about 120 mile per hour winds. Recon data shows that uh, that's what we have, and the pressure is about 959 millibars, which is exactly what it was when the storm came off of Puerto Rico. So this really has not intensified since Puerto Rico originally disrupted the core, and it's been a couple days, and nothing has really changed. We still have a very broad wind field, a rather large eye, and until this uh, dry air issue and shear is solved, this will likely continue this way. Now, there are some signs that the shear is going to let up over the next couple of days, and so some intensification may be possible but it's going to be an intricate dance with some other stuff. But let, first, let me show you, uh, back with the water vapor, you have this trough that we talked about. This is going to start rotating a little bit counterclockwise this way so that the trough will become more north-south oriented over the southeastern U.S. over the next couple of days. So if you go out to the GFS on Sunday morning, you can see this trough outlined like this, more north-south. As it does this, the flow ceases to be southwest over the hurricane and starts to become more aligned with the hurricane's direction of motion, and shear starts to relax here because the low-level and upper-level flow are aligned both toward the north, and so the hurricane feels less shear. This would be more favorable for the hurricane to re-strengthen. However, it's going to be an intricate dance with the fact that there is a cold wake from Jose, this is the water temperature plot, so right now the hurricane is over warm water of about 30 Celsius, but you can see up here all this cold water from when Jose meandered around for days in this area, cooling the water, churning up cooler water south of the Gulf Stream, and this is rather cool water all through here. So when Irma, or sorry, not Irma, Maria moves up into this area, and it's only a couple of of days away from doing that, it's going to be suffering from cooler ocean temperatures, and that will limit intensification and could induce weakening instead. So even if the shear relaxes, as we just discussed, it may weaken anyway 
as it moves north. Uh, so it may have a chance, a window through maybe Sunday or maybe part of Monday to strengthen. And after that, uh, things become less favorable for the hurricane as time goes on. But it could remain dangerous, and the question is how close will this get to the eastern United States, and could it be close enough to bring impacts to the coastline? If we look at the European Ensemble main for Sunday morning, this is only two days from now, so you can see Maria hasn't moved much. It's about here right now, and it moves up to the north-northwest to this position by Sunday morning. And you can see, again, here's the remnants of Jose lingering here. I forgot to show you that on the water vapor imagery. Here it is. The last advisory has been issued on this storm, and uh, the remnants of Jose are just going to dissipate here slowly as it meanders without moving much over the next couple of days. And as we've talked about here in the last couple of discussions, this is uh, providing this break in the ridge that uh, is leaving one piece here and then a big high over New England, such that there's a break in between through which Maria could move harmlessly out to sea, but the question is, when does Jose decay and allow this ridge to reconnect and uh, perhaps force Maria a little bit closer to the coast? So if we go out to uh, now Monday morning, you can see that Jose has basically dissipated on the ensemble mean here. And we have this more connected ridge extending from the western Atlantic through New England. And you might look at this and say, whoa, this could force the hurricane right into the Carolina coast uh, toward the west-northwest. Well, that's not quite true here because this ridge is moving eastward and weakening at the same time as the hurricane is trying to come north. So this is Monday morning. If you look at Tuesday and Wednesday, you can see how the ridge weakens and shifts east. Let's see that again. Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You can see how the ridge shifts east and weakens at the same time that the hurricane is coming up. So by the time we get to Wednesday morning, the hurricane is actually quite close to the Outer Banks of North Carolina, but this ridge has moved over. So what's the steering flow here? It's out of the southwest, and this would turn out quite quickly to the east here. And in this particular case, you wouldn't see a landfall if the hurricane was here under this pattern. However, note how close it is. This is only, what, 100, 150 miles from the Outer Banks of North Carolina? That's close enough to bring impacts given how large this wind field as measured by recon is here. This is a large hurricane and tropical storm force wind field, along with the fact that, again, 100, 150 miles from the Outer Banks, the average day five forecast error is 200 miles. So there's uncertainty here, and all it would have to do is shift to the left a little bit, and you would suddenly have significant impacts to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So this is something to still keep an eye on. Uh, most forecasts still keep this well offshore, including the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. You can see where it is by Wednesday afternoon. This is pretty far from the Outer Banks, but again, you can see in yellow here the wind field. So you only have to get it, you know, a, a couple hundred miles offshore before you start seeing significant impacts to the coast. So this is something that you shouldn't take your eye off of and, and uh, make sure you're ready for the chance of unsettled weather. If the forecast continues to shift just a little bit toward the west, as it has just a little bit over the last couple of days, then it could start getting uncomfortably close. Uh, a landfall still pretty unlikely, but could it get close enough to bring direct impacts to the eastern U.S.? Absolutely. And again, it would likely turn out pretty quickly here. It's unlikely to just jam right up into New England in this kind of a pattern because, again, as this ridge breaks down and moves east, you can see the jet stream here. See that? So it turns this away pretty quick. It reflects it east really easily. So jamming this up into New England is not going to happen. But again, this turn could get quite close here and uh, could bring impacts to the uh, Carolina coast and perhaps the mid-Atlantic if it gets close enough. Still uncertainty five days away plus and there is uncertainty at this range. You can see how large the cone of uncertainty is. So keep an eye on this just in case. We'll continue to track it as it moves north during the next few days. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.